Uh, great to see everyone. You know, I said let's move to um, Oneness Hall for Invitation Sunday. One of my members like, Pastor Time, I think you opened your mouth a little too wide. Uh, I said, let it be done according to your faith. Amen? Uh, you know, we live our life for the sake of the gospel. Amen? Purpose must be for the sake of the gospel. If you live for the gospel, God will take care of your life. Amen? We need to see that God... Bless me, shine your light upon me so that through me, the life of Jesus Christ should shine brightly through me. God will save many, many lives because of you. Amen? I hope you hold tightly to the covenant today and be victorious in worship here today. Uh, let's make a confession of faith. Jesus is a Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. The title of today's message is Healing of the Heart. You know, starting last Sunday... We're going to be going, be going through message series on healing, healing. Last Sunday, we talked about healing of the spirit, spiritual healing. To have Jesus Christ in your life and living for the sake of the gospel, God changing your very identity. Now, we're talking about this deep part of your heart. What is placed in your heart determines the kind of life you will live. What's in your heart? We must have healing of the heart take place. And heart even physically, is one of the most important organs in your body. I mean, if I lose a hand, yes, it will be difficult, but I can still live. If I use a certain body part, yes, it may be difficult, but I can still survive. But when we're talking about the heart, if there's a problem in your heart, you're going to die. <laughs> so today, we're talking about healing of the heart. I pray that God would bring about true healing in your heart. Amen? So how you guard yourself is very, very important. You know, as we talk about what you place in your heart, you need to truly place this gospel 24 in your life. Whatever you're going through in your life, whatever problem, conflict, issues, worries that you may have, fears about the future, whatever it may be, if you can reinterpret it with the gospel, it will turn to you as healing. That problem will turn to you as evidence. That issue in your life, God will use it to truly raise you up to be a witness of Jesus Christ. Amen? In that sense, I say to a child of God, there is no problem to a child of God. Amen? That's the confidence you need to have. Because why? You are children of God. Jesus dying on the cross, he said, it is finished. Not halfway done, not almost done. He said, it is finished. Finished. That finished salvation God has bestowed upon every single one of you guys. That through that amazing answer, you need to look at yourself. Reinterpret the problems in your life. What must you place in your heart? Because you have the answer, Jesus Christ, you need to place only prayer. Only prayer. When you say, God, I want to enjoy only prayer, what are we saying? We're saying that the answer is in Jesus only. That's what we're saying. Because I know Jesus is the only answer. The only thing that I do is going into only prayer. Only prayer. As you place only prayer in your life, God will bless you to live for only evangelism. Amen? You know, God wants to save many, many places, many lost souls through you guys. Even me, I was a non-believer. Right? First Christian in my family. Living a life very scarred by many issues and problems, as I shared with you many times. God changed a person that was impossible to change by the power of the gospel. Whatever state that you may be in right now, whatever spiritual state, mental state, physical state that you may be in right now, Jesus can change your life. Amen? And that's why we come here today. That's why we listen to the word of God to say, God, fill my heart with your spirit. Fill my life with your word. Amen? Fill my life with your plans, God. Amen? And that's what we're here to do. Be filled with that amazing answer of God. Healing, in a way, takes place naturally. Healing takes place once a doctor takes, come to you when, you when you're hurt, right? You go to a doctor. Doctor checks upon what the problem is, and he may fix by suturing up a wound. He may fix you by giving you a medicine. 
He may fix you by putting on a cast on a broken bone. Whatever it may be, when the surgery is done, you don't have to do anything anymore. You just simply wait. And I told you my daughter, I put on, a, on my bike. We were taking on a little stroll to the store. I told my daughter, don't put your leg into the wheel. Don't put your leg into the wheel. Guess what she did? She put her leg into the wheel. What happens when the bare skin gets caught in a wheel? Oh, she had a deep scar, deep wound. She's bleeding everywhere. Oh, my heart dropped to the floor. I carried her and started sprinting 2,000 meters to my car. Nothing could stop me. Cars, I didn't care. <laughs> I was running full speed. Put her on the car to go to the hospital. Finally get her checked in. We have to wait in the couch. <laughs> She's bleeding, but we have to wait in the couch. My heart is like, come on, come on. Where's the doctor? Come on. Finally, the turn came. The doctor checks her out. She's crying. <laughs> you put her on medication. Now, you know, they perform the surgery, suturing up the leg. Every time the suture goes through her skin, it's like somebody putting a knife in my heart. Boom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she's fine. You know? She's uh, under medication, so she's not feeling anything. But I feel everything. It's like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> and she fixed her up. And we put her up, and I told my daughter, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, she said, it's okay, Daddy. <laughs> I still love you. She said, thank you. You know, she's walking around like nothing ever happened. She's running around right now as we speak. They'll be taking out the suture tomorrow. We're going to the doctor to take out the suture tomorrow. But she walks around like there's nothing wrong, right? There's, she's got a smile. She runs around. Do you know why? Because she doesn't have to do anything anymore. Doctor fixed, the dressings are there, she doesn't have to do anything anymore. Healing will take place once the doctor has done the surgery, amen? What am I saying? Jesus has already performed the surgery, amen? He said, it is finished on the cross. He died for us on the cross, he finished it, yet we still live our life as if we're still dying of this disease. We're still separated from God, like I'm this nobody, that nobody can help me. No. Jesus is the Christ, the answer to all my problems. And that amazing gospel, Jesus gave to every single one of you guys. Amen? Only thing left is enjoy that blessing God has given you. That is healing. Enjoying what God has given you. That is healing. Amen? Now with that understanding, let's understand some of the things that we need to truly understand uh, for true healing to take place. Number one, we need to understand about scars. Scars lead to conflicts. Scars lead to conflicts. And conflicts lead your life to a cycle of problems. Have you ever experienced this? Why do I always fall over the same problem over and over and over again? I say to myself, you know, I'm going to live for Christ. I'm going to do this for God, and then I fall over, over and over and over again. There's a certain area in my life. When it comes to that area, I fall over, over and over and over again. Why is this taking place? Because of the unhealed scars in your life. In Judges chapter 21, verse 25, reads this. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. The period of the book of Judges is summed up in the verse that I just read. There's no king. Everybody does whatever they want to do. So the period of Judges looks like this. There's peace, time of peace. Everything's going great. So what do they do? They fall into unbelief. When they fall into unbelief, God allows curses and problems upon their life. When problems come, they cry out to the Lord. And when they cry out to the Lord, God sends them a hero, a judge, to restore them. When God restores them, but they're in a good place. What do they do again? They fall into unbelief again. Over and over and over again. Today, I hope you hold on to the covenant. God, free me from the cycle of unbelief. Amen? Free me from cycle of problems that I'm caught in my life. Free me, God. And the answer to that statement I just made, God has already freed us. Amen? That's the difficult part about truly enjoying freedom because God has already given you the answer and we live our life as if 
I still have the problem. As if I still have the issues in my life. We need to truly receive healing of the scars that we received. You know, some of the scars that you may have are scars from your past. Uh, some of the imprints that you may have from those scars. And by that, I mean whatever event or issue that has happened in your past that has remained as a scar in your life. You never found an answer for it. You never found a solution for it, and just time had by. Do you ever hear people say, time heals? Ever people hear that saying? Oh, time will heal. Let time pass. It'll be okay. Really? From, from the Bible that I see, time does not heal. Gospel heals. Amen? You may forget about the event. The scar in your spirit has not gone. That's so we constantly fall over and over and over again. You need to find your answers in the Word of God. Amen? Today, also, you may have problems in your family background. Uh, you know, those are areas that I've struggled many times in my life, right? Family issues, family scars. Family background kind of leads the way we live our life. It's rooted in how we live our life. An experience of failure in your life may be holding onto your ankle. Because of a certain failure, you have this fear in you. You don't want to fail again. So you have this defensive mechanism that, that comes out to kind of defend yourself every time when you come near that issue in your life. Somebody said, you know, I used to be a person that said, I'm never going to marry. You know that? I'm never going to marry anybody. Because I've seen failures of marriage in my parents. So that was imprinted in my life. That was rooted deeply in my soul. I was like, I'm never going to marry anybody. Why? Because love doesn't work. <laughs> never going to marry. Why? What am I saying? I'm going to protect myself from that scar by not getting into it in the first place. That was my, that was my solution. Is that a good solution? <laughs> I'm telling you, the only answer God has given to us is gospel. Only gospel. Amen? That's the conclusion we need to come to. You may be, these things have put a wrong imprint and wrong roots and wrong nature in your life. These are the areas that we must resolve. The deep problems of the spiritual problems that we have. Why do we have that? Because we are born separated from God. Because we are born under the curse and, sa curse and condemnation. Because we are born under the control of Satan, as the Bible tells us. For all have sinned, fall short of the glory of God. Every single person born broken in a broken world. That's the state in which you are born into. To that issue, God says, hey, try to live a good life. To that issue, do your best. To that issue, does God say, hey, go to church diligently. Pay a lot of offering and I'll resolve your problems. Pray two hours a day, then I'll resolve your problems. God did not say that. God said, Jesus is the Christ, the answer to all my problems. Amen? God gave us one answer called Jesus Christ. Gospel is the answer God has given to us. You know, when we are singing our praise songs, I receive a lot of grace. I love when Angel uh, Ashley screams out. She, you, if you know Ashley, you, you know how difficult that may be. <laughs> Right? Ashley's the kind of person who talks like this. Hi. <laughs> hi. She talks like this. I say, hi, Ashley. She goes, hi. <laughs> She's every year, one way. <laughs> that is healing of the heart. Amen? Yeah. I pray we receive healing. Where is your healing coming from? My healing comes from the gospel. Amen? Yeah. Our healing only takes place in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what God gave us. Healing of the heart. Don't turn anywhere. Don't give your heart to some money, some materialistic things, people, things of this world. Give your heart before Jesus Christ, and he will return it as a witness of true healing. Amen? Amen. With that said, I want to sing one song, uh, Amazing Grace. Can we sing this song together, guys? Uh, I received, Ashley led me to do this. I could not hold my joy and sing this together with you guys. I want to sing Amazing Grace one time with you guys as a confession of faith. Let's sing this together.
That my chains are gone. My chains are gone. And I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, your mercy reigns on it. the amazing grace of Jesus Christ. Amen? I pray you enjoy this amazing healing that Jesus has given you freely by the grace of God. Amen? That's the answer we need to have. As I talked about, there are scars that if you don't resolve, it will constantly hold on to your legs. It will constantly pull you back. But today, I want to tell you that if you hold on to Christ, your problems, God will bring you out, set you free from the cycle of problems that you may have. I hope you truly hold on to that confession and become victorious here today. Amen? Now, as we know, as I said, scars lead to conflicts, but gospel leads us to victory. Amen? So number two, now that we know the, the, the scars can lead us to conflicts and problems, what do we need to understand? Number two, but our past become doors to the future. Now, what kind of door it becomes depends upon the covenant you hold on to. It could become a door of answer or it could be door of Satan. Your past scars, if you do not resolve that, it could be a door of unbelief. It could be a door of constant conflicts. But if you hold on to your answer, it will become a door of amazing answers in your life. Amen? You know, I told you many times, I'm not a person who should be up here. A pastor approaching the gospel. I'm not that kind of person. I was born in a non-believing family, living a broken, fallen life. In that life, God led me to the gospel. My failures led me to the gospel. My issues and problems led me to the gospel. All the things that I call scars, now I say, God, thank you for those problems. Why? Because those issues and problems in my life led me to the gospel. You know, my mom had a big plot of land somewhere in Seoul. I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, and um, she said we could have been very, very rich. She said, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but, you know, because of my dad's business went bad or whatever, we had all had to run away to America. And for something, it, it was gone now, you know. My dad used to own a pretty big company when I was young. But because of a financial issue, it all crashed down. So my mom used to say, man, we could have, you know, all these you know, things that we could have been. Right? She said, you could have been a son of a very you know, nice, wealthy home. I said, now I look back, I'm like, oh, thank God that didn't happen. You know why? Because if that was my life, I would not be standing here today. Do you know that? Whatever issue you have, problems in your life, you know what? God is leading you to the gospel. Amen? I'm not telling you you have to live a broken life. You have to live a problematic life. No. What I'm saying is whatever it is in your life, God is leading you to the gospel. Amen? That's the blessing that you need to hold on to. That's why if you truly hold on to the covenant of Jesus Christ, your problems will be a door of evangelism. Door of evangelism. Uh, 
because of the issue that what you were in through, God says, you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Amen? Because of that amazing answer, whatever you do, God will open doors of evangelism in your life. You know, David fighting Goliath was a unique door that only David could open. Do you know that? There were many, there were king, there were soldiers, there were many champions, but only David holding onto the covenant was able to stand before Goliath and receive the answer. In your respective fields that you may be in, in your workplace, in your family, whoever you meet, you are a unique door in which God will work through to truly proclaim the gospel. Amen? That's the covenant you got to hold on to, guys. I mean, for what reason are we really here? For what? Why are you here in Korea? To make money. Are you here just to be successful in life? You know, I talked to a lot of multi-ethnics, and they, I asked them about, hey, so what do you do? They make money, and what's your plans? They like to buy, they send money back home, and they buy a piece of land and buy a piece of property with the money that they have sent home. And with that, as they come back and go to their own respective countries where they're from, now they have a big plot of land, nice building that they can live off for the rest of their life. I said, is that your dream? Is that your dream? Is that your, your goal for success? I know many, many people who have many, many buildings, rich people who commit suicide. Do you know that, guys? Do you know that many, many people with lots of money are not happy? Do you know that, guys? Do you know that all the treasures in the world cannot give you happiness? Do you know that? Relationship cannot give you happiness. Family cannot give you happiness. Success, money, wealth cannot give you happiness. The only thing gives us happiness is Jesus Christ. That's what God wants you to be, to understand. Those who understand this blessing, you will become a door of evangelism in the field that you stand. Amen? Your scars, your problem will become a direction to the ministry that you have. You know, my family issues and scars that I've experienced becomes a great area in which God uses to proclaim the gospel. I just talked to, I, I testified about this a couple weeks ago. I met a kid from England who has lots of problems and issues in his life with this, you know, their parents divorced. He's coming to Korea, living in a country. He doesn't speak a word of Korean in a new culture. Has lots of difficulty, no friends. And I began talking to him. Hey, I used to be like that. I went to a country where I didn't speak any English. I had to go when I was 10. I, I speak no English. Right? In a new culture, parents divorced. All these things that I was going through was a big burden in my life. But God gave me healing through Jesus Christ. I want you to be happy. And I proclaimed the gospel to him. He accepted Jesus Christ. I'm meeting with him every week, having Bible study to help him understand this amazing answer that is in the gospel. You know, issues in your life, God will use as a door of evangelism. Problem is in your life. God will direct you to the ministry that you'll be part of for the rest of your life. Amen? Is there anything for us to worry about? The Bible says there's nothing for you to worry about. The door, their past can become door of, to your future. As I said, it could be a door of answer, or if you do not hold on to the covenant, it can be a door of Satan. Satan, do you think he will ever let you go with that scar that you're holding on to? That motive that you have in deep place in your heart, you think Satan's going to let you just get away with that? No, he's going to use that motive. He's going to use that scar that you have to bring you down so that you will not be able to live your life for the glory of God. That is Satan's plan. Satan's plan is to see you cry, feel bad and angry and sad. He doesn't care for that. Only thing he cares is take away God's glory. That's what he cares. God brought you for what? To glorify God. Amen? That is the purpose of your life. Glorify God. It's not to make money. It's not to be successful. All those things are secondary. Our number one primary goal is to glorify God through your work, through your relationship, through your life, is to glorify God. Amen? Amen. Satan wants to take that away through your scars, through the problems. Satan attacks us through our anxieties. Like I said, what's an anxiety, guys? Anxiety is you have anxiety. Why? Because you have an issue and you don't have an answer. 
That's why we have anxiety. You know, 1 Peter 5, 7 reads this, Casting all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Satan is looking someone to devour. He's a lion. What does he smell? What's the smell that comes off of you? Anxiety. What is anxiety? Unbelief. You holding on to your problems as if you don't have an answer. Jesus is the Christ answer to all my problems. Amen? Amen. Satan wants you to say, Jesus is the Christ, but not my problems. That's what Satan wants you to say. That's what Satan wants you to believe. Anxieties. Satan attacks through worries. Philippians 4, 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything and on prayer and supplication, present your request to God. Right? Because why? God who transcends all things will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God wants to tr- guard your heart and your mind. But what are we doing? We're not giving our worries upon him. We're not giving God the opportunity to guard our hearts and our minds. Because what are we saying? No, this is my problem. God says, hey, I have the answer of the gospel. But you say, no, this is my problem. I don't want to give it to you, God. You know, Jesus took it upon himself to take all of our infirmities, all of our sins. He took it upon himself. And he has to take it upon himself. If Jesus does not take away your problems, pain, and scars, I'm telling you, your sin will never be forgiven. That's why Jesus, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus Christ, what is that action doing? He's putting the sin of the entire world in the head of Jesus. So that when Jesus dies on the cross, he is, the, he is dying for, he's resolving the problem of the sin and curse once and for all as the perfect sacrifice. Amen. That's what Jesus has accomplished on the cross. Satan attacks through our unbelief. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 reads this. In their case, God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. What has he done? He has placed unbelief in our hearts. Unbelief. Worries, anxieties, unbelief are the attacking points of Satan, guys. Why do we have these things? Why? Because ultimately, we're not coming to the conclusion of Jesus Christ. Today, the answer is simple. Are you going to let your past scars become a door of answer or door of Satan? That's the choice that's upon you today. You have scars in your family. I know. I talk to you guys. You have worries about your future. I know. I talk to you guys. You may have problems of your past. I know. But with those things in your life, are you going to let those things become door of Satan or become a door of amazing answer in your life? Hold on to the covenant of Jesus Christ here today. Amen? I pray that all of you become a true witness of Jesus Christ. As I said, scars lead to conflicts, but our past can become doors to the future. So, what God asks us to do here today, number three, Put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God. The restoration of thanksgiving takes place as you put the, as we look at today's passage, as you put on the yoke of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus says, all you who are weary and heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. And you guys heard me talk about this passage. When, when Jesus says, hey, come to me and I'll give you rest, we're thinking, okay, he's going to, you know, give us a nice place to go sit down and, and take a load off, right? No, he says, now, okay, come to me. I'm going to give you rest. Now, here, here's my yoke. Boom. <laughs> here, do more work. <laughs> so what is he saying? Stop living for Satan, which is burden to you. Live for me. Amen? That is healing, guys. Don't live for yourself. Live for the world. Don't live in the worldly ways. Live for the glory of Jesus Christ. And God is the one who will be leading your life. Amen? That is thanksgiving. Now that we understand, let's put on the full armor of God. What is the full armor of God? Let's go from head to toe. Helmet of salvation. What is it? Assurance of salvation. 
every day knowing that my salvation is secured in Jesus Christ. That my salvation given by Christ is eternal and forever. Breastplate of righteousness. What is it? God has made you righteous. Do you know that God calls you righteous? Is it because of the righteous life that you live? I think not. Okay. Just on my drive over here, I had to press down the gas. Mm, get out of my way. Right? Like I didn't drive such a righteous person. I wasn't driving like a righteous person. If you were to look at me, you probably I was running from the police, maybe you may think. I was just late for church. I was just going. Righteous. But God calls you righteous. You know why? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? We say, thank you, God. Blessed plate of righteousness. Belt of truth. You know that in the um, most ancient times, their pants, they didn't have size. We don't have size like 30, 32, you know, 34. My pant size keep getting larger and larger <laughs> as, I, as I age. But they didn't have those kind of pants. They were all big pants where if you don't hold it with the belt, it's going to fall right to your ankle. Belt was a very essential item that everybody had to have. So without a belt, you'd be walking around with pants literally on your ankles. Freedom God gives through the belt of truth. I am the way, the life, and the truth. No one comes a father except through me. God has given us absolute freedom from Satan, from sin, from the background of heaven. He has brought us to Christ. Absolute freedom, belt of truth, shield of faith. You know, Satan is said to have been shooting flaming arrows. That when you get hit by an arrow, of course you die. But when you're hit by a flaming arrow, what happens? Not only do you die, the fire gets burned to other places. It gets spreading to other people and other places. So what is it talking about? Satan's unbelief spreads like fire. So what do you need to have? You need to have shield of faith. You need to guard yourself against the unbelief that Satan wants to imprint in your heart. That Jesus is not the Christ. That this is not enough. Sword of the word of God is talking about now that we're put on offense to fight the battle. And how do we fight the battle? With the power of God. The word, the covenant that will be fulfilled in our life. Shoe of readiness of the gospel of peace. You know, shoe that you're, well, you're, uh, you're in your feet right now. You know, if you, you ever imagine, you ever have put on uncomfortable shoes? Uncomfortable shoes? What is the most comfortable shoes? What are Flip flops. Oh, those are comfortable. You put it on, it's like your airs, your toes, your, it feels good. But I can't wear, as a pastor, I can't wear flip flops, right? I gotta, I gotta wear, what do I gotta wear? I gotta wear. Dress shoes is what I wear. And these aren't that comfortable. But if it's too small or too tight, guess what? You will not be ready. So the gospel of the shoe of readiness is shoe of the readiness talking about the peace that you have in the gospel. Peace that you have in the gospel. What is the full armor of God? It's talking about ultimately your identity and authority. You are a child of God. Enjoy that blessing. You are saved children of God. God is with us. He will guide you. Wherever you go, force of darkness will be broken down. Angels will be mobilized. The kingdom of God come upon your life so that you can live for the sake of the gospel. Amen? This is the full armor of God. If you don't have it, it's like a soldier going onto a field without his weapons, without his armor. He cannot function as a soldier. We, as leaders of Christ for the gospel, we will not be able to function if we are not ready in the gospel. Today, I pray that you will have healing of the heart taking place. Amen? What did I say? Scars lead to problems. So hold on to the gospel because your past will become doors to the future. What kind of door? Either a door of answer or door of problem. Which one are you going to be? Hold on to the covenant today. By putting on the full armor of God, let's become a witness of true healing in our life. Amen? I pray that healing will take place through the power of the gospel in your life. That many people in your life will receive healing because of you guys. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the message you've given to us. 
May you bless our brothers and sisters here in Christ who truly have received the healing that is from Jesus Christ. Help us to hold on to today's covenant. And as we receive the healing of the heart, lead us to heal other people. Lead us and use our life to bring about true healing into the world, broken world, Father. Thank you so much. We pray all these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.